Hello and welcome to Video Game Hangover. I'm Randy Dickinson and I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm DJ Ross. I'm in Mountain View, California. Each week on Video Game Hangover, we talk about the games that have been keeping us up at night. This week we're playing What the Golf? What the Golf? What the Golf, DJ? <laughs> and Fantasy Star Online 2. What the Fantasy Star Online 2? <laughs> Fantasy! What the Fantasy Star Online 2, DJ? Yeah. <laughs> um, plus, we'll check in on what's new with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Not going to do it. Two was no, enough. No, no, sorry. Two, two yep. was fine. Yep. We'll do it later. It's what the later. Animal Crossing? Oh, no. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what? Comma, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How's things? How's life? Oh, great. You know, just another great week in this country <laughs> <God>. <laughs> well, what country is that I, DJ? <laughs> you know you know I, I don't know why i said it like that that's just gestures just broadly at everything <laughs> just this you know this that's fine that's not fine yep. no um, not at all I, it's my, terrible. my it's weekend broken. was all right yeah. yeah just just stuff going on sure Trying to take my mind off stuff by playing, playing some video games. Playing stupid video games, yes. Yep. We hope everyone is safe, of course. Yep. Yep. Been a, been quite a year. Yeah. Been a, yeah. Been a real year. 2020 can get the fuck out of here as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. <laughs> uh, Let's uh, fast forward right now. I feel like each year it just gets worse, though. So I'm just like... <laughs> Why don't we enjoy what we have while we have it? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. That's a good lesson. Absolutely. Oh, but anyway, not to yeah. dwell on that. Not at all. We know, listen, we know that, uh, uh, and DJ and I did not plan this at all, but we know that some problems cannot be solved by sort of uh, um, losing yourself in video games. We are sympathetic to that. We are woke individuals. <laughs> um, but, you know, for our little one hour a week, um, we're going to stick to that positive thing that we have some element of control over, which is, you know, our consumption of video games. Right. 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 Hopefully uh, it, it provides some escapism to, to people out there. Sure. Absolutely. So what horrible game are you playing? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about all the games I hate this week. You know what? Speaking of horrible games, I don't know. I think I've made up my mind to just read spoilers for The Last of Us 2. Oh, really? I think I watched a video clip last week, this over the weekend, um, and it was just somebody getting stabbed in the throat. And I was like, <laughs> I, I don't need that. Uh, I, I don't need it. I'm sure, like... It's not wasn't surprising to me that that happened. Sure, but uh, I'm just like uh, we can do without it. So just gonna just force myself to, to be completely spoiled about this game, so <laughs> I don't end up just like forcing myself to play through it. Do you not think maybe that there would be useful and valuable survival techniques that you could learn from a show, a, 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 a movie? I was called it a movie, no. uh, a, a video game like The Last of Us Two, given our sort of inevitable apocalyptic no. ending. No. Um, no, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, I think I'll be fine. Just gonna, if, just gonna go with the the zombie land if, rules. Just if it gets cardio, to that point, if we get to tap. that point, I was probably <laughs> long gone anyway. So yeah, I'm not gonna be stabbing anybody anytime soon. You're not an end end of the world kind of guy. No, no. You go in the first wave. I'm a, yeah, I'm I'm out of there for the season one, episode one. <laughs> you're the you're the red shirt, right? <laughs> yeah. Be like, hey, nobody decided to lock this door. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of not a lot of folks in the apocalypse going hmm if only we had a graphic designer around <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got to figure out why the words are on the wrong side of the door <laughs> right yeah got to get that do not open yeah, dead inside what, whatever it is kerning right yeah exactly <laughs> but no i'm yeah. not uh i wasn't counting on the last of us to uh to teach me new survival skills so i think no. that will be uh they will not be missed uh, in my life well you might want to call in sick to video game hangover for that week in july because <laughs> i'm gonna play it and i'm gonna talk your ear off about it well you you might want to call in sick because i'm just gonna be spoiling the whole thing from start <laughs> to finish no you better not that's not cool i, I won't do that to just 
to clarify, but the few joys I have you in think, life. Why would you take this from me? <laughs> you think you're going to show up and tell me about The Last of Us? I will already <laughs> know everything you're about to say. <laughs> I'm going to be all, and then this happened, and you're going to be all, I know, really. Yeah, yeah. this again. I've known for three months. Uh, I'm thinking about just keeping it wholesome whenever that comes out, playing something else. Yeah. Something yeah. with I mean, I watched um, throat stabbing. Sure, that'd be nice. A sort of nice counterbalance to whatever I've got going on in my head at that point. So um, I watched Sony's little 25-minute Last of Us deep dive the other day, and uh um, they were like, here's the cool stuff you can do, and here's how this is different, and here's how we took the story, and blah, blah, blah. And now here's nine minutes of uninterrupted gameplay, and I'm like, I'm out. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. Like, there's so much of this video game that is out there already sort of waiting mm. to be spoiled. And if there's any element of this that I'm invested in, it's sort of what happened to those characters, what arc are they on, um, you know, where what's going on with these people that uh, I could have cared deeply about at the end of Last of Us Part 1. So, um, so yeah, that's the thing that... I kind of don't want to give away. Show me all the, you know, crazy new monsters and stuff like that. That's fine. But um, if you're going to start giving away cool things that happened to Ellie, then maybe <laughs> maybe I wait. I'm a little disappointed because I feel like there's a good chance that there is like a worthwhile story in the middle of it. But yeah. I'm just like, at the same time, no thanks. I'm There's <laughs> plenty of other stuff out there I sure. can take in. Yeah. And there's tons story. of people out there who are dying to spoil that for you, so I'm sure oh, yeah. you can find that information pretty easily if you'd like to. Well, that that's my new problem, because I'm just like, okay, give me these spoilers so I can save myself from the, the hassle, but then I'm just like, give me, give me the real spoiler so I don't want this fake stuff going around. It's hard to tell what is, uh, <laughs> what is actually from The Last of Us 2 and what is just a weird 4chan rumor. <laughs> this, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to wait. It's going to be real weird. I'm going to like stay up, uh, do a midnight launch, and just go immediately to YouTube and find somebody just streaming the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah. And you're all, that's not what it said on 4chan. <laughs> oh. Usually such a reliable source. Yeah, I know. I can't believe they would lie to me like that. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. That's still pretty far off, though. That's um, July something, right? Was it July? I thought it was June. I think it got bumped out of June. I think it's July now. Okay, well, I have some time. If only there were some device I had in my hand that would tell me this information. <laughs> uh, you're right. Uh, I got 619. Well, I had a 612. Sure. Well, better figure that out soon. Right, maybe I was consu confusing it with the ghost of Tsushima. Sush. Yeah, I don't know that about word. that one either. The ghost of Sush. <laughs> The ghost That's what of all the, the hardcore fans call it, I believe. Sush. I'm going to play some playing, sush tonight. Playing that guys. sush this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can I, can I get all my sush? All that sush. <laughs> looks like a beautiful game, but I don't know if I care. Yeah, I don't know. It does look very beautiful. I want to know why the logo is all futuristic, though. Does that bother anyone else? It's like I've never seen anybody else talk about it. It feels yeah. weird and disjointed to me. Um, I'm hoping that's like going to be some Assassin's Creed style reveal at some point that will just blow everybody's <laughs> mind. But uh, it's secretly an Assassin's Creed game, yeah. Oh, that'll be the worst. <laughs> you start it up, and it's like, yeah, remember that game? Actually, we're going to just make you climb a watchtower. Anyway, yeah, so no, I, I hope that's yeah. good. People seem to be looking forward to that. Yeah. Apparently, I also you know, watched... if I don't want to stab somebody in the throat, but if I just cut their whole head off, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of artsy if you're Japanese. Yeah, so, sure, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going to wait for reviews on uh, Ghosts of Sush. Um, I'm pretty invested in Last <laughs> of Us, so. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sure. Those will know. be my big summer Sony tentpoles. Oh, I don't have any big <laughs> Sony summer tentpoles. I'm a little, feeling a little <laughs> left out now. Yeah. Uh, you know how it is. I don't play any new video games. So you're not going to be lining up for a PS5? No, I don't know if anybody is. Yeah. Certainly not outside. Are you crazy? Right. Exactly. <laughs> not going to be any social distancing happening in that line. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, there's a... Uh gonna be a Thursday. By the time this episode comes out, there will be a big Sony 
mm, internet no, they press just, conference. Uh, they just postponed it because of things. But, Did they? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think there's a new date as of uh, recording. But well, if it kept us waiting this long. What's a few more days or however long? Yeah. It did, did feel like we were actually going to see something, though. So it's like, oh, so close. Something other than the controller. Yeah. All right. Well, mm. hmm. there are a lot of sort of like counter E3 things happening on the Internet right now. I haven't really sort of figured out what to consume in that way. Have you plotted your way through that at all? No, I'm just waiting for like all the I feel like there should be E3 stuff happening because um, I mean, all the like anti e3 stuff like the nintendo treehouse thing i'm not gonna be doing uh, the stream probably but everybody had all their little alternative events planned yeah which i don't know how much that's been affected by you know the quarantine everybody working from home but i kind of expect like you know i don't know if that would get be as affected as you know going to an actual convention center and doing a, a floor show and all that so i'm just like where is the the direct or whatever where is that nintendo news where yeah, are all those Mario. Yeah. I mean, I really just I want to see trailers and announcements and maybe a little bit uh, 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 gameplay footage or something like that. I don't, I don't need the pomp and circumstance. I certainly don't need Ubisoft or Ubisoft, I guess, to do a uh, uh, what a synchronized let's dance reveal because <laughs> those are always painful. Um, oh, I will so, yeah. miss the car on the Microsoft stage. <laughs> They're just gonna, the just gonna have have a car and show it in Phil Spencer's garage or something. <laughs> Here it is. Anyway, um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of that internet stuff going on. We watched um, the uh, Wholesome Games Direct last week. That was super fun. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Just a list of uh, pleasant indie games coming out over the next, uh, roughly the next year. I think yeah. a lot of them were. I think the latest thing was 2021. Uh, but that was oh, yeah. fun. A lot of good games in that list. Yeah. So if like DJ and I, you like a, uh, uh, you know, like like your games to be maybe occasionally a little, a uh, little bit uh, of a softer world, then um, maybe check out the wholesome wholesome direct. I think is what it was called. Yeah. Been getting a lot of coverage lately, so I'm I'm very uh, happy for those guys. Yeah, and that corresponds to um, the the wholesome games uh, little. What do they call those? little conference i went to at pax east oh yeah yeah that twitter account has really just taken off in the last year kind of or so. Up. yeah so cool super proud of those guys people hungry for something that doesn't require ellie stabbing people in the throat <laughs> yeah, i know they should release like <laughs> i don't know ellie's summer vacation or something to coincide with the last of us too where she just yeah. goes and like has a picnic or something sometimes you want a nice game where you plant some flowers and and ride a bike and i don't know do things like that yeah yeah just remake the last of us one if the outbreak hadn't happened and everybody's just chilling out having a good time yeah <laughs> ellie would just be a kid yeah yeah it's nice yeah it's pleasant hanging out at the mall instead of you know hanging out at the mall yeah well yeah right so what games have you been playing what uh, well, i know you've been playing fantasy star of course you've been playing <laughs> animal crossing I dipped into what the golf because it finally came out what on the the Switch golf? this week. Um, where should we begin? What the golf? Uh, sure. sure. I played a we little of this uh, back on the Apple Arcade. Remember Apple Arcade? Remember that whole thing? I do. That's quite a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have the Apple Arcade, so I played it on the Switch, uh, where it is a relatively new release. Um, it's uh, I played a lot of it. Man, I put a ton of hours yeah. on this. I've, I, I'm at ninety eight percent completion on what the golf DJ. Oh my god, I don't think I've made it nearly that far. But uh, <laughs> there were a lot of Apple Arcade games competing for my attention during those uh, those couple months. Yeah, you had to consume as much as possible. I get it, but um, <laughs> I would say worth dipping back into maybe because uh, I have had a lot of fun with this game. It's uh, it's a good time. It is um kind of this wacky uh and you i'm not telling you this because you know but i'm telling our listeners that it's this kind of wacky take on golf i have already completely spoiled myself for what the golf so just go <laughs> okay. 
Gotcha. So um, the theory uh, that what the golf posits is that everything is golf um, uh, and also that golf is boring. So what with those kind of two tenets in mind, what things can you turn into golf that make it slightly more fun? Um, so while the game sort of begins with you kind of playing a traditional 3D golf game, which uh, basically gives you a little ball and a, a little meter that <laughs> points in a certain direction and you hit a button and there's a slicing noise and the ball shoots off towards the pin um, and lather, rinse, repeat as uh, every golf video game has done in the past. Um, what the golf then kind of spins that into uh, later on your... <laughs> You're, you're, you line up the ball and you put the little arrow and you point it in a specific direction. You hit the button and then your uh, golfer ragdolls across yeah, the, um, yep, across the green uh, in the direction of the tee. And then eventually more and more wacky things um, sort of take the place of the golf ball. Um, so at some point I was, you were basically kind of controlling a piano uh, and, and slicing it down the street where it would <laughs> hit. Um, cactuses and the cactuses would stick to the piano and every time you would hit it it would make a banging kind of piano noise and would sort of like you know Katamari Damacy style kind of roll over clumsily on itself with cactuses stuck to it as you were making your way towards the pin and, and that was sort of golf for that round um, uh, and it's a ton, it's a ton of fun. I really like it a lot. It's um it reminds me a lot of playing uh, a WarioWare game Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in that sort of every sort of incarnation, every new screen, every um, little tee off that you get kind of picks a weird and wacky rule for how golf is going to work for the next 45 seconds. And you golf with that in mind. Um, and then uh, you can move on to the next one and it's the next sort of iteration of wacky golf. Um, or you can kind of stick there for a little bit and, and sort of do increasingly more complex things with the uh, the format of golf that you've just been taught. Um, and doing that, doing it three times, will get you a little crown, and the crowns ultimately unlock um, something at the end. Um, and that's I was very impressed by just how many different ways they found to spin off just the basic, you know, hold back on the stick and launch the ball towards the hole <laughs> yes. like, framework. Because yep. every time you start up a new set of three, it's almost like, you know, the level loads in and you look at it and you're just like, what's the ball this time? Is it, <laughs> is it, is it the actual ball? Is like the the meter itself going to shot, uh, like shoot toward the hole or is it going to be like the house down the street? It's just every like the first stage is always like has a great moment of surprise at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then it kind of like f- ends after three. So it's like it's perfect. It like never drags out too long. Yeah, it doesn't overstay its welcome, which is what I kind of like about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The second one inevitably sort of makes the proceeding a little more difficult. It sort of cranks up the uh, the difficulty a little bit by giving you a par that you have to hit. Like you must be able to golf this round and hit the tee with X number of strokes. And then the third iteration within each sort of group of three is usually some bizarro lunatic kind of thing that they do with it, uh, which uh, sometimes in a lot of ways, they seem to sort of go back to like race the sheep to the finish line. <laughs> it's you <laughs> sort of frantically playing golf while a sheep rolls end over end across the field. Um, yeah. Or, or, you know, there, there'll be little black cats uh, around the, uh, the green and <laughs> the rule for the final one must be knock over 10 cats. So you have to like point your golf ball in the direction of hitting this little stuffed cat, which falls over and you go in and goes, wow. And then a little ticker goes down and you have nine more. Uh, so it's just, again, it continues to sort of ramp up the weirdness and randomness uh, all within sort of the guise of being, Oh, it's just golf guys. <laughs> You're just whacking yeah. a ball across a field. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I adore it. I, I adore <laughs> Later on, they get very creative with sort of paying homage to or parodying other video games. Yeah, um, that was a little strange. I mean, it's fun, but it was just like, are we, are we like out of ideas now? We're just doing uh, you know parodies. <laughs> I, again, I think it's done in such a way that it sort of reminds me what – like there's a, por- a series of portal levels and those are a lot of yeah. fun. Um, uh, and it sort of reminded me like, oh, I, this is what I love about kind of these portal puzzles um, because you have to sort of shoot a couple of portals and then, then the golf ball will sort of move through the portals and inevitably you have to get it to come out of a portal near the pin. And again, 
you know, by level three, they're much more complex and you're trying to manage four different rooms at a time with portals everywhere. And so again, I'm like, oh, this is what I like about portal, but it's also kind of funny that I'm playing golf this way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I dug it. And then, you know, by the time it sort of has an opportunity to wear out, it's welcome. You're on to the next thing. You're moved on to some other, um, uh, you know, theme or video game that you're sort of parodying. There is a series of levels um, that just broke my brain that uh, are essentially a tribute to the game Super Hot. Did you are you familiar oh. with Super Hot? Yeah. I don't know if I played those levels in this game, though. OK. I guess sort of the, th- and I had to look up, tra- I've never played Super Hot. I had to look up trailers and sort of gameplay video of it to sort of figure out what I'm looking at here. It has a very deliberate art style. And it's funny because what the golf kind of apes that LARP style, uh, <laughs> art style. Um, and um, the hook in Super Hot is that you and the other players can only move while you're shooting. And the hook in what the golf is, you can only move while um, your golf ball is in motion. Um, so you have to kind of point in a direction, slice the ball, uh, and the ball in this case is a bullet and you have to sort of like shatter the enemies, which are depicted as little red outlines of people. Um, and meanwhile, they're shooting back. So you have to kind of dodge their bullets cause you can see them sort of flying through the air. Excuse me, not bullets, golf balls. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of weird timing that goes on and you're zigzagging across the, um, the green, uh, <laughs> and trying to sort of avoid, avoid being, golfed at i guess um (laughs) and at the end of the level in giant letters it says super putt uh, in ominous letters and it's yeah probably much funnier if you've played super hot but um (laughs) those hurt my brain a little bit because i kept not quite understanding what i should be doing and when there's another example of just how how far they're able to to like diverge from the basic golf game because there are a few levels in that where um you know for the most of the most of the time, it's just like a kind of a top-down isometric 3D golf game. But then there are some where it's almost like like a, a 2D perspective Pac-Man grid or something, where you're just like trying to golf a ball through a maze or something. Yeah, it's just yeah. weird. Like at one point, at what point does it is it no longer a golf game? Is it like a, a completely different game that they've like yes. shoehorned yeah. in for a couple of stages? <laughs> Yeah, quite a few points. Um, But I think you're willing, excuse me, like me to kind of uh, enjoy the experiment, right? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of it is just, like I said, it's the surprise of what each new level brings. Yeah. Um, And they kind of earn enough loyalty in the early levels so that later on when you're a golf ball in a robot rowboat trying to like row across the, I'm like, okay, well, this is not really even golf anymore. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the most impressive thing is that a lot of the stages, as far as they get removed from just playing golf, is that they all seem to maintain just the basic mechanic of like you pull back on the thing and it shoots yeah. the golf ball forward, except the environment you're doing this in is sometimes just completely outlandish and something that would be completely inappropriate in a golf game. Right, right. And yeah, and it diverges. In, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on in my throat. I'm sorry. Uh, in a lot of ways that are not sort of your stint, not just sort of video game uh, uh, goofiness. Like sometimes there's a series of levels that sort of posit um, golf as uh, soccer. Uh, so you have <laughs> other golfers, soccer players trying to sort of block and steal the ball from you and kind of dribble it down the, uh, the green and you're trying to steal it back and shoot it into the uh, goal. Uh, there's a series that are like bowling, so it's it's sort of inserting golf. As I sort of said in the beginning, there the out the uh, sort of uh, theory here sort of is that everything is golf and golf is boring. So how do we make it less boring? Um, and so by sort of turning soccer into golf, by turning bowling into golf, um, uh, I think uh, yeah, you're still sort of like playing a golf game. And like you said, it's surprising just how much um, that goofy little pull back on the stick and hit the button to slice it mechanic works in all of these other kind of formulas for video games yeah yeah surprising how much they can wrap around it (laughs) there's a lot there are a lot of levels in this thing um there are something like 13 or 14 kind of themed worlds and if you get enough crowns you get access to a couple of other secret ones um the timer in the game shows me at over 10 hours with this thing oh my god Um, 
So it's a lot of golf. <laughs> um, uh, and, and it's pretty rapid fire and fun. And it's something kind of like wacky and fresh every 10 seconds. Um, so I think that has been the thing that's kind of kept me like, okay, what are they going to do next? What's the next little goofy joke? What's going to, you know, what's the next funny thing they're going to turn into golf? Um, so, so yeah, I can golf with uh, super balls is fun. Yeah. And they turn the golf ball into just this wacky red ball that bounces all over the place and off of all of the environments. Uh, it seemed like a really good fit for mobile because like all the holes are really bite sized. You can just, you know, play a few minutes here and there or a few seconds here and there even. Yeah. Um, and then there's not a whole lot of continuity between them. So, you know, you finish up a set uh, and you move on to the next one whenever you, uh, you pull your phone out again. Oh, sure. If you're, you know. Or you can just mainline it, apparently, on the Switch. <laughs> like I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's pretty sort of interaction light, too. It, you know, there's, I don't know how many buttons on a Switch, and it really only uses two of them. So it's not like uh, you need kind of virtual joysticks or anything like that on a mobile to make this mm -hmm. accessible. I think it would totally work uh, with a touchscreen. Um, yeah. Can you use the touchscreen on the Switch? I don't I'm curious know. how you I've actually play it. I've not tried, actually. I've been playing with the sticks and buttons, so. Huh. Yeah. Left sticks brings up the little arrow for the direction of the ball and uh, the face buttons just sort of slice it. Oh, wow. Okay. On the, uh, the the phone, it controls just like you would expect. It's like, uh, you know, if you played desert golfing, it's uh, exactly <laughs> it's like that. The controls for desert golf, yeah. But it's a good time. I would, um, yeah, probably not for everybody. But if you uh, like a, a little kind of absurdist take on golf, uh, yeah, I would, would recommend. It has a, a daily challenge too, which is kind of fun. If you go into the game every single day, uh, in the main menu, there's a, um, a daily kind of leaderboard challenge where it takes a bunch of sort of unconnected and unrelated levels from all of the levels in the game and kind of remixes them into kind of a speed round. Um, mm. And then it puts everybody's total stroke count into a leaderboard so you can kind of see how you do against other folks. Um, and uh, that has been a fun thing to check in with every day since this came out as well. That's cool. Yeah. There's other stuff in here. The Switch version has um, uh, multiplayer and co-op and stuff like that. And a few other, a few other little features that uh, are, um, I think are kind of exclusive to the Switch that didn't make it to the mobile version. So, hmm. uh, well, this is available on mobile. Uh, if uh, you have any interest in these other little features or playing it with people in your house, then uh, maybe check out the Switch version. I wonder if um, I haven't really kept up with Apple Arcade. But for the longest time, anything that came out there was sort of exclusive to it. So it's not like yeah. you could buy them a la carte, um, which is a little disappointing because there are a few games on there where I could see myself like kind of sticking with beyond my uh, subscription, as it were. Uh, and this is probably one of them. Like I would come back to it every once in a while. I don't, it wasn't the type of game where I just felt like, oh, I'm going to you know blast through this whole thing in a couple of weeks or whatever, but <laughs> I felt like it was much better taken in just you know every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so I can see myself coming back to this on my phone, but not really like maintaining the Apple Arcade subscription just to come back to this one thing. Sure. I mean, that's the appeal of Desert Golf. I mean, the Desert Golf is yeah. endless. There are thousands of holes, um, and you can dip into it anytime, play a couple... <laughs> play a couple of holes or maybe just play one really tough one while you're yeah you know waiting for your your zoom call for work to start or whatever <laughs> you know wherever you have a few little moments of 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 breathing room in your day and um and then come back to it a couple weeks later and the controls are always the same and the mechanics are always the same and immediately looking at it you get i know what i'm supposed to do there's the pin there's the ball i have to sort of bridge the gap between the two of them um and uh, the thing about Desert Golf that makes me crazy is that every time I get a new phone, I have to start from scratch. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, no. it doesn't carry your game with you. Oh, um, no. <laughs> I have uh, carried my game across two phones so far. Oh. Yeah. Uh, huh. Hmm. That gotta, must be an Android thing. Got to do that backup before you, uh, you switch over to the new phone. <laughs> I don't know how Android works. I don't, no, it ports all my stuff over, but it just didn't save my game save for uh, Desert Golf, unfortunately. Oh, terrible. I don't know what yeah. I would do if I lost my Desert Golf <laughs> save. I'd probably just quit. You must be thousands of holes into that game at this oh, point. I'm so far into that game. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Still not We're even like kill halfway screen. through. But. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I guess. So, play with the golf. It's a lot of fun, but really just play Desert Golf. <laughs> 
Uh, I just loaded it up. I'm on hole 5,951. Wow. Let me see where I'm at in Desert Girl. Still, I think there's like, uh, I think it's like, like what's the, the big number? It's like 65, 35 or whatever. Uh, so not even a tenth of the way through the game. <laughs> it's fine. I, um, I need something to do while I'm waiting in line. <laughs> this is my new phone I got last September, and I'm only on hole number 448. So. Mm some work to do i was thousands i was into the thousands on my previous phone so i uh, um <laughs> i'm a little angry that uh you have uh, game safe portability on your apple and i don't have it on my android yeah that's a real shame you gotta figure mm-hmm. out how you can uh fix that next time you get a new phone i'm gonna send an angry tweet to the developer that abandoned this game years ago <laughs> <laughs> uh well that's cool i'm glad you're able to uh to experience this finally what the golf not not the anguish of uh desert golfing desert golf um yeah what the golf it's a delight i've had a really good time with it it's super funny uh and fun and uh yeah, would recommend nice yeah so um speak to me of things fantasy star online related <laughs> uh so i played some fantasy star online too oh. uh this last week which, if you have not been keeping up with this, this is um, an MMO set in the uh, Fantasy Star universe. Which is very strange, because I mean, the Fantasy Star, uh, as a series, has a weird history. Like, they came out on a bunch of Sega consoles um, in the, the 8 and 16-bit era. And then there was, like, Fantasy Star Online on the Dreamcast, which was <laughs> um, no longer, like, a turn-based RPG, but it was... Uh, as from what I've heard, it was kind of like a, a 3D Diablo style game. It was like a dungeon crawler almost. Mm-hmm. I never played the Dreamcast version, which is like one of my absolute biggest gaming regrets because it <laughs> sounded like super cool. Let me tell you a wacky story. I played that. Version oh, you played game. it? Oh, yep. You played I it had a, a friend in college who had a Dreamcast, um, and um, uh, the Dreamcast you could plug a telephone cable in the back of and play yeah. games online. And there were not a lot of games you could play online, but the one that he wanted to show me was this Fantasy Star Online. Um, so yeah, he and I played that game briefly <laughs> against wow. other individuals or with other individuals on the internet. I have vague memories of it, but I know I played this game. Do you have a mag? Do I have a what? No, <laughs> that's if you had a mag. I thought that was a thing. This game, hmm, doesn't sound familiar. I don't know. Maybe you didn't play that long. Yeah, but anyway, so there was that weird kind of Diablo spinoff, and then um, it came back as uh, there were like a few other weird iterations following that. But then in around 2012, I think it was, they announced Fancy Star Online two, which um, a lot of people got super excited about because the first one was very popular. I got super excited about it because I never played the first one. I was like, now's my chance. And then it just never came out in the US, like stayed in Japan for eight years. Uh, And barring some, uh, there were some workarounds where people could download the Japanese version. I think there were even some form of like translation patches. I don't know uh, how thorough they were. Um, like you could basically jump through a bunch of hoops to play the Japanese version if you really want to play this. Mm-hmm. But uh, I always kind of uh, chalked it up to just being like this lost game that, you know, maybe if I got super desperate one day, I would, you know, install one of those patches and log into the Japanese version, and check it out. Until I think last summer, they announced that um, Phil Spencer, as a matter of fact, uh, announced that they were going to be bringing it to Xbox and Windows and possibly other platforms later i don't know uh, but in the u.s which is the big thing that was like my big e3 announcement uh last year i was super excited uh and so a few months ago it came out on the xbox uh and then just this last week or so it finally launched on windows so i can jump in to check it out yeah so this is this is essentially a 12 year old game mm, eight years old Eight year old. Maybe okay. I don't know when they started development on it, but it's uh, you know it's not a new game. They've been updating it since the original release, and I don't know how uh, like how many kind of uh, graphical or gameplay updates that includes. But um, while it's not, it's probably not the exact same game that people were playing in 2012. It is um, like it might be a little prettier or something. It is uh, it still shows its age quite a bit. 
Um, but for the most part, it's playable. It is, um, it's interesting that it seems to be set in the same sort of like fantasy star universe as the original console games. Like I only played the first one, so I don't really know where the, uh, kind of the universe developed since then, but it has kind of that same mix of science fiction and like light fantasy elements where you have people running around in like this crazy, like mass effect looking armor with these laser swords but then they'll just be like an elf somewhere or like you'll go down to a, a planet and have to fight a dragon or something so kind of an interesting mix you play as um uh like a soldier in basically what is uh the uh the fantasy star equivalent of starfleet i guess where you know humanity has expanded to the stars and now they're all these uh, uncharted planets they have to go and discover and you know sometimes there are hostile aliens living on them so they have to go down and you know keep the peace or whatever uh -huh. and you do that by just hopping into a group and carrying out little kind of diablo maybe some monster hunter style quests on these planets i feel like it really um it came out in 2012 so it's kind of in the middle of the, the like height of the monster hunter phenomenon uh -huh. at least in old monster hunter world it was like this is when it was super huge on like uh the i guess the 3ds and the the vita i think it actually had a vita release yeah but uh, it definitely feels like a lot of it is inspired by the the monster hunter format uh where you you grew up in a lobby and you you pick a quest off the you know the quest board or whatever and you all go down and fight the big boss <laughs> so you could say the foundational kind of mission statement of this game is that one all games are monster hunter yeah <laughs> yeah i can't tell how much of the original fantasy star uh or the original fantasy star online is in this um it really feels like it's a lot of monster hunter um i mean that's fine um unlike monster hunter there are um, a bunch of different races and uh classes that you can choose between monster hunter kind of had classes but they're all kind of based on whatever weapon you were carrying but in this one it seems like they are more like you know, you pick a hunter class and they have like a big sword or a like a, a blade or something. And then you there are like ranger classes with bows and like assault rifles. And then I think there are even some like magic or in this they call it like photonic energy or something. Like classes <laughs> that specialize in that uh, that I haven't really played around with. I mostly stuck with just the basic sword because I'm still trying to learn the ropes. Um, but you also earn experience and level up uh which is very different from monster hunter which is uh you know you'd always uh your stats would be based primarily on the equipment you were carrying but on this one i would be like down on the planet and just killing monsters and fighting the boss and like every once in a while i'll be like oh you leveled up now you can take on the next set of quests or whatever uh which is pretty different so i'm kind of expecting it not to progress quite in the same way as monster hunter like maybe i'll just have to stop and grind out some levels at certain points i don't know Mm -hmm. combat wise it's actually pretty good it feels like um it's pretty fast paced it's very action heavy maybe a little faster than monster hunter um there's this whole kind of timed hit system where as you're doing uh, as you're attacking there will be a little like circle narrowing down around your character and if you hit the attack button at a certain point you will pull off a um i think it's called a perfect hit or something which will you know really enhances your damage but it gives it this kind of cool uh timing aspect which i really like feels very um not quite like a rhythm game but you can't just run in and mash the buttons uh like crazy because you will not be as doing as much damage as you want to be doing um and it really changes up based on the types of attacks you're using because sometimes it's like fairly regular rhythm but if you um you know for instance you launch an enemy up into the air maybe the next hit you have to to time will be like but they land on the ground again or something like that so um that kept kept it very interesting and prevent, prevented it from getting too uh mashy which was something i was worried about cool. uh, so it's um it's not turn-based is i guess what i'm sort of extrapolating from that it's more oh yeah yeah it's all in real, real time, time which yeah. uh the original like fantasy star online one was in real time wasn't it it's like a if it played like diablo at all yes yeah yeah we're it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm going to talk about it next week on the show, but I've been playing Minecraft Dungeons, and I don't have a lot of, like, I've not played Diablo or Gauntlet or games like that. Um, 
Uh, but uh, the, the game that I uh, have weird little flashbacks in my brain to is is uh, now I realize maybe was that first Fantasy Star. Oh. Um, yeah. And the, I, just, I think it was just the one time, and I don't even know if it was very long that I played it with my buddy Brandon <laughs> back in college. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, it's a very limited experience uh, with uh, with that type of game. But, yeah, that's probably the thing I have in my brain that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of calling back to as I play Minecraft Dungeons. Hmm. I um yeah it's not quite or Fantasy Star Online two is not quite Diablo it feels much more like action heavy mm-hmm. when I think of Diablo I just think of a lot of clicking like you you've got I haven't played any of the console versions but on the PC version you've just got your mouse cursor and you click on a skeleton or whatever and your guy runs over to it and starts like slashing away with a sword or <laughs> whatever weapon they've got. And this one, you know, you're maneuvering around in 3D, you know, like rotating the camera and stuff and, and doing dodges and cool flashy moves as you hit it with your sword. So it's much more like um, Monster Hunter in that sense. Right. Cool. Uh, which so, is and fun. what is the, um, I guess maybe give me a little uh, understanding of what the online element is, because I, I saw in our Discord that you and a couple of other uh, members of the community were talking about like what ship you needed to be on or something. Oh yeah. Um, and and so what are you doing that is kind of the online component of this? So the ship thing is just it's like the equivalent of like in World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy or whatever. You have to pick a server to be on with, with uh, oh, gotcha. all the so people the you want to play server. with. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically it. the ship is a server, and uh, you want to end up on the same ship as the people you want to play with. Otherwise, you uh, cannot. That's about so. Yeah, it's one of those things that is kind of uh, you know like a, like a gotcha whenever you start a new MMO or something. You really want to make sure you are aligned on what server or ship you're all going to play on. <laughs> Got to coordinate those servers. Yeah, it was not too much trouble getting onto the same ship as everybody in this time. Uh, so that was nice. Cool. Um, there seems to be like a story component to this. There's like a campaign and occasionally they will throw a quest at me with cutscenes and um, characters who speak with actual voice acting. They've like recorded all the dialogue in English, which is uh, like a surprising amount of effort for a game that's this old and feels very yeah. niche. Um, so far, I don't know what to make of the story. It is extremely vague in that weird like 2010s last generation jrpg kind of way where i'm just like i can't tell if this is purposely vague like everything will be explained at some point later on or if it will just never make sense <laughs> or they're just trying to give you kind of a loose scenario to be able to turn you loo- turn you uh, upon the world to do your thing. Yeah, which like I think I would be fine with that. I just need to figure out how much attention I should be paying to this <laughs> story. Cuz so I far be like notes what's <laughs> Yeah. So far the uh like the voice acting and the cutscenes have not been especially good. I would I'm just like really grasping to to, to like stay awake during a lot of them a lot of the time i'm just kind of paging through being like oh can we go on the next hunt yet can we go down the next planet yet when, when is everybody gonna finish talking so i have no idea if that improves but maybe we will see so it was a fairly positive experience i think uh first couple of days playing this um i started up on sunday and i was like all right time to get back into fantasy star online too this is my new life and this is where everything turned around is uh, I tried to start the game and um, it wouldn't start. So <laughs> it was like, that's <laughs> weird. I was like, one of those is just typical kind of MMO launch window issues. So I, I kind of did some troubleshooting. And what I've discovered is that my computer had restarted overnight because that's what computers do when you're you know, not paying <laughs> attention. Uh, but because of that, that had somehow just set off like this cascade of just catastrophic issues with um, like the Windows Store because that's how you have to download this thing. You have to go, you have to like, sign into your Xbox account and get it from the Windows Store, and then it yeah. installs through that, and you have to sign into Xbox Live or whatever. I don't know if it was originally designed that way or how it originally worked. I guess it was not always. I mean, I think it was always on Windows. I I don't know how, like the technical history of this game. But um, however they have it set up now, it is just the, the it seems very volatile where <laughs> if you just do the wrong thing, you click on the wrong 
dialogue option when it's asking you to how you want to launch the game you could just destroy your your installation of fantasy star online too oh god so on sunday and a little, little bit monday morning i was just like scampering around the entire internet trying to figure out what is going on like is this a common issue is this happening to only me because i that's certainly an option it's not incredibly far-fetched but it no, it actually seems like a lot of people are having trouble just playing this game to the extent where I I logged into the uh, the official Fantasy Star Online 2 Discord and went to their tech support channel, and they have 19 pinned topics uh, of different technical issues that people are experiencing, <laughs> uh, and none of them were my issue. So I was just like, oh my god, this is... Oh, make it 20. Disaster. Yeah, so it could, <laughs> could be an even 20. Um <laughs> At that point, I decided like I have reached my limit for how much time I'm willing to spend troubleshooting this game. That uh, I feel like you know they've had eight years to work on this thing. They didn't need to launch it in the state that it is in now. I would have been perfectly happy waiting a few more months because you know what's a few more months on top of this. But at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm <laughs> putting this away until they get it to work, right. and I don't have to you know. Some people have actually gone to great lengths trying to fix this thing. Somebody, they have like, I don't know who this is. It's like some team has made their own kind of third party launcher for the game that oh, <laughs> you man. launch it. And it's like, click this button to repair all the files that are broken when you run the Sega installer. Uh, so that is that is extremely impressive. And shout out to those guys for you know putting in all this work to get their uh, community <laughs> able to enjoy, enjoy this game. They're taking a very different approach. They've waited eight years to play this game, and they're not waiting another freaking day. Oh, no, day. no. Yeah, they they want it right now. Yeah. But like I said, I like none of those issues were the exact issue I was having. And in fact, it sounded like there might have been a fix for my specific problem, but it would just break itself again if I were ever to restart my computer another time, which is like, oh, okay, if that's the case, then <laughs> just forget it. I, I don't need to deal with this every single time. So that was a little disappointing. Yeah, I, I I'm really hoping that you know I expect some issues around every new game launch, especially if it's an MMO, uh, especially if it is uh, a pretty antiquated game at this point that you're trying to launch on new um, hardware, or like a new software or OS environment. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna check back in a few months down the line and uh, <laughs> see what shape it's in. <laughs> Do these and I don't have a lot of I don't have any experience with MMOs. Do these things generally? get like speedy attention or is it a situation generally where there's so many people playing and it's such a sprawling system uh, that it takes forever to kind of chase out bugs like this well i mean it's hard to say there, in this is case. there no go-to answer in this case yeah i mean in most cases i just expect like don't even hope to play your mmo launch weekend or whatever because you know the oh, servers okay. are going to be hammered they're going to so be it's really your bugs. fault, DJ. That's <laughs> my <unplayable. laughs> fault. Well, <laughs> this is something I'm super impressed with about Final Fantasy. Actually, is that every expansion launch, there was like 24 hours of issues with um, the launch, like three or four years ago. But like with, when Shadowbringers came out, it was seamless. Like I can't remember anything that uh, like any problems logging to the game. Maybe there was like a short queue or something, but it was like one of the most like one of the smoothest game launches I've ever seen. Wow. So that's very impressive. Maybe it's unfair, unfair to set the bar that high, but like with this thing, I don't know what's going on because it's like, first of all, it's such an old <laughs> game. It's running on weird hardware. It's like, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what to expect. I'm sure they're, um, you know, they're scrambling to fix a lot of the problems with it. Although, as I mentioned, there are just tons of things that could potentially go wrong. So I don't really know what they're uh, prioritizing. It seems like for the most part, the servers are working. So that's good. It's just nobody can run the game after they've uh, right. restarted their computer. They really just need to copy that little group of gamers that made their own launcher. Yeah, they really need to figure out just what's going buy on. those guys out. Yeah, they need to just uh, you know, if there's some way to uncouple it from the Windows Store because that seems to be the source of a lot of the issues people are having. That would be good. Hmm. Maybe just make an Epic Game Store exclusive. That <laughs> yeah, seems maybe. to solve so many problems. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> we just have Epic throw money at it. Just tie it to that epic launcher, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know, like, if it's going to come out on other platforms at some point because I know Microsoft has a huge stake in it at this point. I don't know if we can expect it on Steam or Epic or whatever. Uh, Phil Spencer made some weird comment that made it sound like it was coming to other platforms, so I don't know if that includes 
PS4 or possibly even a Switch port. But um, yeah, still very early on. Still a, a lot of things to be determined, I guess. Huh. Uh, well, I'm, uh, it's exciting that uh, this thing is finally available for uh, English-speaking people to play. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is, sounds like it's not quite ready for prime time. No, it is quite far from being ready for prime time, I would say. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's been eight years. I'll just wait a few more months. Hopefully that doesn't take much longer. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, what uh, what is going on uh, in the world of Animal Crossing for you, DJ? Oh, so I just want to give an update. I still playing? Have, uh, still checking in every day? Still playing. Still checking in every day. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about all the crazy renovations I was doing to my town. Trying to get it to uh, trying to get a, a chunk of it to be like this urban uh, city center, mm -hmm. and at this point, I am mostly done with all of those renovations. I think it's which oh, is nice. uh, you know it's taken a couple of weeks. It's uh, it's been a lot of laying down paths all over my island, <laughs> and relocating neighbors and uh, you know the civic buildings. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It uh, it's been a journey. Just to recap, I decided. A few weeks ago that, uh, you know, I wanted this little urban city center. I went online and used that um, that Happy Island Designer tool, which is mm -hmm. like the, you know, redesign your island in a web browser. Stayed up all night working on that thing. And then just started. <laughs> plot everything out before you actually start moving things around in your island. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know measure twice, cut once or whatever they say. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially in Animal Crossing, where, you know, if you measure or cut incorrectly, it's going to be 24 hours before you have a chance to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a few close calls there. But anyway, so it was a whole thing. I spent, uh, you know, every day I would come back to this thing. And like you said, you can do one major relocation every 24 hours. So I would, you know, do all my construction work for the day, kind of look over all the, the houses and buildings and figure out, okay, I can, this guy's plot is ready so I can move this guy. Uh, it, it took me a little longer to to relocate stuff like the store and the museum because I was doing a lot of um, work around where I wanted those to end up. Like I built this uh, this nice little museum plaza with a reflecting pool and some uh, some flowers and trees around it, which I think turned out oh, pretty nice. well. Uh, before finally relocating the museum, so that was very nice. Um, I got. I special ordered some drink machines from you and some of the uh, the guys in the Discord, which was very exciting. So I've got those strewn around, and um, there are just a few extra areas that I've I still need to fill in. I'm not sure what those are going to be yet, but for the most part, I think all the like streets are laid down, and uh, that's looking pretty good. Awesome. And now I'm just trying to like keep the momentum going because one of my greatest fears when I started this whole ordeal was I was going to put in all this time and effort into like totally re landscaping this uh, this section. It's like maybe a third of the island at this point. Um, and then I would finish that and then just step away from it and not work on anything else. So you'd have this one <laughs> section of the island that was super developed and nice. And meanwhile, the rest of the island is just like a still just a total trash pile of all the stuff <laughs> that I had to like move out of this one section while I was doing all the construction. So for instance, one of the, the sections is just all the trees that I had to move and all the flowers that I had to move out of the way. Mm -hmm. And at this point it is still just that. So it's very weird because you, you show up on the Island and it's like a lot of uh, paved roads and everything. And you just cross a bridge and it is <laughs> like the wilderness a million trees and flowers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there are like some unfinished paths and just weird neighbors that are still living there for some reason. So I need to keep it going. I think the next thing I'm going to look at is just turning that into um, more of a traditional Animal Crossing themed area, I guess, with the, you know, more nature. Gotcha. Um, so kind of a natural suburbs with a city center. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. You know, yeah. maybe a few of my villagers uh, don't want to live in the city, so they, they right. want to live out in the forest still. Um, I've seen a few designs for cool, like Zen rock gardens, which I want to do. Um, and then I also want to put in an orchard somewhere because that is uh, another cool thing I've seen people doing. Yeah. Uh, but the key is just momentum. I can't uh, let myself take a take a break now that I've finished most of the city because I, I need to uh, <laughs> I need to make sure the rest of the island gets the same amount of attention. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching. Um, um... 
YouTube video. I'm watching a lot of YouTube lately. <laughs> YouTube videos of um, there are a lot of channels that do like uh, five star island tours, uh, oh, and yeah. they'll get folks from kind of within the community and uh, um, go to their island and and just sort of record them walking around and talking about what they built and how they built it and what tools they used and stuff like that. And um, there was somebody who uh, took a very like I was trying to build kind of a natural looking village. Um, didn't want to do a lot of uh, landscaping or uh, terraforming. Kind of wanted to work within the island as it was. Um, um, but you know, every every villager had to have a yard, and they wanted to create kind of an outdoor movie theater area. And I was oh, like, "What? We do an outdoor theater. movie? <laughs> yeah. How, how does that? And work? they wanted to have like a little coffee cafe. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so I felt pretty good about my island and I felt like I had a really good idea for it. And then I watched the video where this person had an outdoor movie screen and yeah. a little projector and a popcorn machine and had put down little tiles that look like blankets on the ground with picnic baskets and That's stuff fun. for everybody to sit and watch movies. And I went, well, now I've got to rebuild my entire island <laughs> and, um, or at least find a corner of my island to turn into an outdoor movie theater. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the, the good news is that, you know, you're never stuck with you, uh, your island in any form. You're, you're never really at a point where you're uh, – and this is kind of the exciting thing about New Horizons that didn't really exist in previous Animal Crossing games is, you know, if somebody built a house directly in front of your house or if you were trying to sort of plant your, I don't know, like your, your hybrid flower garden and then a new villager moved in and dropped their house on top of it, you were screwed. There was nothing you could do about that. Yeah. Um, and in New Horizons, you kind of have control over all of these things. So you really can kind of take a godlike approach to the entire island and uh, make sure everything's kind of the way you like it. And if you, you know, walk into your shop one day and there's a movie projector and it gives you an idea for remodeling an entire corner of your <laughs> island, like, that is totally no, I within your means. I know exactly, right? It has all become so clear. Um, so yeah, the amount of freedom that you have to kind of manipulate the island in, in unique ways uh, uh, is pretty overwhelming in yeah. New Horizons. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a very sort of different approach to consuming the game uh, compared to previous versions of Animal Crossing. Oh, absolutely. I'm kind of undecided on whether it's like a good thing i mean no it's definitely a good thing <laughs> yeah i just feel like in the older games there was definitely a lot more of it that just made it feel like you were at the whim of the like, other things that were just happening in the game like like you said villagers would just move in at random places in the town and there was nothing you could do about it but on like on some level it's like well all right i just have to you know that's how it's gonna be so <laughs> i have to live with it yep. you couldn't just pull up an entire section of your island and rearrange things. Right. Um, it's kind of like the people who time travel because they want to see all the events immediately or they, they missed a fish or something, so they have to go back and catch it again instead of waiting for it to come back around next year. Um, I always felt like that was a really interesting quality of the Animal Crossing games where there was just stuff that was out of your control. Yes. But then, you know, people figured out ways to control it. And in this one, you have a uh, <laughs> complete uh, control over all the like the the buildings and where your villages live, which ultimately again is is good because it allows you a little bit more freedom to to have your dream island. Right. But at the same time, I think it takes away a little bit of that weird uh, restriction that was always very unique uh, to Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, and I very much I take that approach. I, and again, I think maybe there's probably sort of a cadre of us who who have kind of come up on on the older Animal Crossing games who maybe feel this way. Um, uh, I'm very much of the perspective that uh, um, uh, time traveling is sort of a, 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 against the kind of general uh, uh, conceit of the game, that it is supposed to be a long game. It's supposed to be this thing that sort of reveals itself over time. And to rush that, to me, um, seems like uh, um, it wouldn't be fun to me. Um, so I, I, I don't time travel. I take a similar approach to sort of terraforming. I have the ability at this point to kind of like change the direction that my rivers flow to put in waterfalls and places that weren't there before. Um, and I, I've, I've taken a very light hand with that kind of stuff. There's not a lot of it I feel like I want to do. Like I restarted this game four times to get the island layout that yeah. I want. Why do I want to hack it? <laughs> Why do I want to beat it up? Um, so well, I mean, uh, you already restarted it. Why didn't you just go with the first island layout? <laughs> This is true, yeah. Um, because I want just like an inkling of a feeling of control. I don't necessarily want to <laughs> be God in this scenario. Yeah. Um, so you didn't even so realize, yeah, like in the DS version, you just got dropped off in the middle of the forest. You didn't even have <laughs> your choice in the the island you went to. <laughs> this is true. 
Um, so, so yeah, I, and I, again, I think Animal Crossing can be all of these things to all people. It, it, and, you know, the cool thing about it, I guess, is you have the ability to choose how you want to consume it and at the pace you want to consume it. Um, and while I don't necessarily want to, you know, fast forward to August to catch all of August's bugs right now, uh, August will get here. And I, and I have faith that I'll still be playing the game in August. So, yeah, uh, um, yeah, if, if, uh, you know. You feel like maybe you'll be moving on to the next big shiny thing by August, then sure, speed your way through it. But that's not how I want to play Animal Crossing. To that end, it does completely terrify me that I'm going to miss a fish or bug at some point, uh, because I know I would not time travel back around to to like get it out of order. I yeah. would just force myself to wait an entire year or like eight <laughs> months or however long it would take, and I would, I would just be yeah. like, "Oh, I can't believe it! If only I just ground up some more fish bait or whatever." Yeah. We've been very um, uh, conscientious of that in our Discord. As we get towards the end of a month, inevitably one of us will post, guys, hey, only four days left to be able to catch this elusive fish. Um, you know, and we'll set up <laughs> a, a, what a relay of advice on, like, I caught mine at the end of the pier. I used 20 pieces <laughs> of bait. Um, whatever the sort of the voodoo is that makes that fish conjure uh, to make sure that we share it with our fellow uh, uh, island representatives so that we can all cross those off of our list before the end of the month. Yeah. Which, again, historically has not been how I've consumed Animal Crossing. Um, it's been a much more sort of like, eh, you know, if I don't get it by August 31st, I'll catch it. Is there an August 31st? 30 days, says September, April, June. <laughs> yes, there is an August 31st. Uh, I will there's, catch there's it. Only, uh, there's a fish you can only catch on August 32nd. <laughs> there's a fish you can only catch on February 29th. You got to wait four years to yeah, catch it. Yeah, well, you already missed it. <laughs> yeah, I did. So you... Um, but yeah, yeah. And in the past, I was just sort of like, oh, I'll get it next year. No rush. But this year, I sort of feel like, yeah, everybody's kind of like consuming Animal Crossing at a fever pace. And I, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I want to I wanna catch those fish now. <laughs> oh, man. I was, I was super hardcore into the DS version. I was just like, no fish is getting away before the, uh, the month <laughs> runs out. <laughs> yeah. I got um, with... The DS version, uh, yeah, I was pretty relaxed with it. With the 3DS version, I had an app that I had downloaded um, that had a little checklist in it. That sort of like, it's May, here are the fish you can catch. And you could put a little tick mark and a little box next to the fish mm -hmm. as you caught them. And, and that was the point at which I was sort of like kind of excess, obsessing over some of those details. Um, so... So yeah, I think in a lot of ways, organization, the internet, <laughs> you know, apps are the death of just sort of leisurely consuming Animal Crossing. Um, I was actually it amazed into... recently because I was trying to go back and look up stuff from the DS version. But, you know, thinking back on just how much less developed kind of the internet was in like 2005 or 2006, yeah. whenever the DS version came out compared to um, like seven or eight years later, when did New Leaf come out? Like 2012, 2013? 12, yeah, you're right. 12. But like, so... When the when Wild World came out on the DS, there was an Animal Crossing wiki or something like there were a few sites that would uh, you, you could go and look up all the fish and stuff. But compared to stuff like um, like New Leaf, like the amount of websites devoted to that game, and especially now uh, New Horizons, there oh, yeah. is so little information out there on Wild World. It almost feels like people just forgot the game existed because i was trying to find like <laughs> pictures of clothing and furniture from wild world like i wanted specifically the wild world version of stuff and they just do not exist in the way that uh, you know it's so easy to look up you know where's that piece of furniture that i had a new leaf oh here it is on a hundred different websites huh. uh, it feels very buried and almost like lost to time which is uh oh, just crazy because it doesn't feel like it was that long ago yeah well this is this is your mission in life dj here is your 2020 zen thing <laughs> just become like a wild world archivist yeah yeah just just slowly play your way through wild world and and, and archive everything that happens <laughs> in that game every fish bug piece of furniture fossil whatever oh i don't know i can't go back to that game i already decided <laughs> uh, when i gave it up i was just quitting cold turkey so <laughs> not happening i would just start a new uh completely new uh save file yeah Man, it would be rough to try to live with the uh, the inventory constraints of only having oh yeah twelve things in your pocket at a time. 
I actually started up New Leaf recently because I wanted to um, like see if I made any custom designs that I wanted to pull out of there. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't believe it. It just felt antiquated. It <laughs> felt so old and primitive. It felt like, like first of all, like we thought the graphics in this looked good. It looks like an N64 game almost. No, no. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I used to think that game was beautiful, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looked great for a 3DS game, but compared to New Horizons, oh, it's rough. It's, uh, <laughs> it's something. That's funny. So, so That was spoiled. quite an experience. Yeah. Yikes. So I can't imagine going back to the DS version after that. No, it would be rough. <laughs> uh, but anyway, my town's looking pretty good. I'm super beautiful. happy with it. I want a tour. Yeah, I should open it up. I should, uh, yeah, maybe this weekend I'll just drop the a Dodo code in the, the Discord or whatever. Oh, cool. Come, come check it out. Beautiful. Maybe if I have uh, high turnip prices, get some people in there. We'll come wreck your island. Yeah. No, I already uh, I already set up, uh, you know, I've got the barricades ready if we need to, uh, <laughs> to execute turnip <laughs> protocol. Uh, you've seen these people who are like, oh, I've got turnip prices, and they will just fence off a path leading directly yep. to the store so you can't go and destroy stuff on the island. Uh, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got it ready to go. I just got to flip the switch. Yeah. Excellent. And by flip the switch, I go, I mean, go and manually lay out like 70 sections of fence. <laughs> Spend four hours, yeah, building a fenced in pathway to your shop. Yeah. Good time. Anyway, no, I should open it up soon so people can check it out. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up then. If uh, you need any more video game hangover in your brain, please follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash VG hangover. You can also get show notes, links, and tell us what you thought about this very episode uh, by going to VG hangover.com. We want to encourage everybody to jump into our Discord. It seems like that's where all of our good conversation happens. Um, and we've, uh, what are we talking about this week? There is, of course, we have our Animal Crossing channel, and that is always filled with useful advice if you're not an Animal Crossing person. Um, we've been covering all kinds of other stuff. We were talking about, um, what, I saw more, uh, Venom recently. <laughs> Venom, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, I was talking about that on the Discord. Classic not movie. a good movie, would not recommend to anyone. Um, <laughs> Did you watch Star Trek Nemesis yet? Didn't know. I didn't watch Star Trek Nemesis. I was too burned by my Venom experience. I had to <laughs> no more Tom Hardy movies ever. Bathe myself in episodes of Community until I felt human again. Um, Is Tom Hardy yeah. in uh, that new one, uh, Tenet or whatever? I don't believe he's so. Taking this one off, okay. The new Christopher Nolan. No, he seems yeah. like he's moved on to a new cast of characters, except for Michael Caine. Michael Caine has Michael, no Michael Caine is just yeah, can't get rid of him. Yep. Not that we want to, but I'm just no, not at all. I'm, I'm no, kind of shocked. Those forever. Like, let, <laughs> let that guy take a vacation, please. But yeah, I don't know. Well, we're talking about other stuff. Right. So yeah, hop into the Discord. Go to vghangover.com. There will be a link to join our Discord. It's a pretty chill group. Come hang out with us, talk about video games, and Tom Hardy, apparently. Yep. Sell your turnips. And <laughs> Sell your turnips, absolutely. Uh, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else. Fine podcasts like this one are sold uh, please tell your friends about us. That is probably the best way that you can help us grow the show. Um, yeah. And next time somebody says, what's a good podcast I should listen to? Make sure you've got a link to Video Game Hangover ready to go. Yeah. And they're like, I don't like yeah. video games. Just tell them we talk about uh, Tom Hardy all the time. <laughs> it's really just Tom Hardy and Taco Bell. Oh, you know, Christopher Nolan, the not too far-fetched. <laughs> I haven't been to Taco Bell in like three months. Who am I? Oh, my I? God. I had it on Saturday. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, I'm glad somebody's uh, <laughs> making up for it. It's the, the one day of the week I'm allowed to leave the house. <laughs> uh, maybe soon. Maybe. Maybe I'll just stay home forever. Oh, uh, yeah. There's always Animal Crossing. There is always. I'm just going to move to a desert island. Uh, all right. We'll be back next week. This is Randy Dickinson. This is DJ Ross. Thanks for listening to Video Game Hangover. Goodbye. Good night. See ya.
I've not heard your Michael Caine, but I assume it would be something along the lines of, my name's Michael Caine. That is where you are Michael. so wrong. That's and a, you can look a, at my that's, live video that's, for proof, that's, because that's, I, that's the do, very thing I don't do. What, I do, say do, that he do, used to talk do, like that. Do you, Michael Caine? OK. I say, Michael Caine used to talk like this in the 1960s, right? But that has changed. And I say that over the years, Michael's voice has come down several octaves. Let me finish. And all of the cigars and the brandy don't let me finish can now be heard. OK. In the, I've not fucking finished in the back of the voice and the voice okay. now. Will, I've still not finished the voice. Well, you're panicking. I've, yeah, no, because you look stop. like you're about to bloody talk. Let me finish. Right, so, Michael Cade's voice now in the Batman movies and in Harry Brown. I can't go fast because Michael Cade talks very, very slowly. Right, this is how Michael Caine speaks. Michael Caine speaks to his nose like that. He gets very, very specific. It's very like that. When he gets loudly, it gets very loud indeed. It gets very specific. It's not quite nasal enough the way you're doing it, all right? You're not doing it the way he speaks. You're not doing it with the kind of... And you don't do the broken voice when he gets very emotional. When he gets very emotional indeed. She was only 16 years old. She was only 16. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. That's Michael Caine. 